If there is one thing that people of all eras, origins, nationalities, times share, is the desire to remember those who left a mark in our lives. Friends, family, mentors. This can translate into a beautifully simple gesture, like planting a tree with the name of the beloved one, or in a more articulated one, like a work of art. The painter Victor Hartmann was a close friend of Modus Mussorgsky. And when he died unexpectedly of an aneurysm in 1873, aged only 39, Mussorgsky was devastated. A couple of weeks after his passing, Hartmann's friends and supporters organized an exhibition of his paintings at the Imperial Academy of Arts in St. Petersburg. And about a year later, Mussorgsky channeled his pain into a new piano work, making his memories of his close friend immortal. Most of the works that inspired pictures at an exhibition have been lost in time. But thanks to Mussorgsky's music, they are still remembered today. After Mussorgsky's death in 1881, this work fell into oblivion, until 1922, when the great conductor Sergei Kusevitsky commissioned Maurice Ravel to orchestrate it. Hello everyone, I'm Giovanni Griglio, and I welcome you to a new episode of Conducting Pills. If you're new here, this channel is all about classical music score analysis and conducting tips. I want to thank all my patrons for making this series possible, and now on with Mussorgsky. Mussorgsky imagined himself walking through the paintings, capturing the spirit of each of them. He depicted himself walking with a promenade in modo russico. Promenade is French for walk, while in modo russico is Italian for in the Russian style. This promenade opens the piece and returns throughout the whole work, connecting one painting to another. A solo trumpet plays the first two bars. The four bars that follow condense the dialogue between the trumpet and the brass section, with the latter intervening halfway through the second and fourth bar. The second half of this dialogue carries out the modulation to A flat major. The conversation moves to the strings, driving away from the key of A flat with that G flat in the bass line leading to a D flat major. The woodwinds join in, followed by horns and trumpets, and the dialogue extends to the woodwinds and the strings. to reach the full orchestra in forte to close the promenade. The orchestration with those three trumpets in close chords doubled by the violins divisi in octaves is rich and perfectly captures the full Russian sound of Mussorgsky. The original sketch of Nomus was lost, but critic Vladimir Statov describes it as a sketch depicting a little gnome, clumsily running with crooked legs. The sound is ominous, with the dark colors of the violas, cellos, and basses combined with the clarinets and bassoons. Now this is the register, again, low, dark, unsettling with those muted trumpets. This cell is repeated several times with small variations, ending on a fortissimo followed by a gran pausa. The stop and go movements of the gnome continue. Notice the orchestration strings, except the violas, in pizzicato, with double basses in octaves, xylophone and timpani, tuba with mute, contrabassoon, three flutes and three oboes. The mid register is completely missing from the spectrum, enhancing the ominousness of the sound anticipated in the first few bars. Another grand pause and the action is repeated. The orchestration changes to a somewhat lighter one. The darkness is still present in the clarinet, cellos, and double basses parts. The harp and celesta add a sinister twinkle, accompanied by the glissandos of the violas and the cellos. The opening material returns briefly bridging to a new episode. Tempo marking poco meno mosso e pesante means slightly slower and heavy.
this sort of march is interrupted abruptly by the initial cell. Only to restart shortly after. The episode is expanded, incorporated into a descending chromatic scale. A variation of the second episode follows, enriched by the trills and chromatic scales of the bass, clarinet and bassoon, doubled by the cellos and basses. And the piece ends with the gnome frantically running away, or towards us perhaps. A placid retake of the promenade walks us gently to the next painting. The original title is in Italian. According to Statov, this is the depiction of an old Italian castle in front of which a troubadour sings a song. The key is a somber G-sharp minor, though that is not revealed right away, as both cellos and bassoons start with open fifths. Ravel gives the melody to an alto saxophone in E-flat. The atmosphere is melancholic, foggy, coming from far away in the past. This is ironic considering the instrument was invented in the 1840s. Violas and cellos keep a very simple accompaniment. The cellos palpitate on a G-sharp pedal, while the violas move simply from the fifth to sixth note of the scale. The saxophone offers us its lonely melody, expanding on it, and leaving room for the strings to introduce a new phrase based on the same basic material. The bassoons return once more with the closing part of the opening phrase, while the English horn's line is replaced by the violas. The melody is then entrusted to the coupled flute English horn. Notice how the flute is playing in its low register, darkening the color of the English horn with no risk of overpowering it. A cell from this phrase is used to build a crescendo. That rapidly falls back. The same episode is presented again, this time by the flute, again in its low register, and the clarinet. The line rests in the pulsing G-sharp in the bassoons, while the strings offer glimpses of what we've just heard. After the saxophone plays the main theme once more, the music fades away until a final surprise. On a pianissimo dynamic of one single G-sharp in the bass clarinet, the saxophone glisses up underlined by a pizzicato in forte of the strings only to die away into oblivion right after. The promenade returns, this time in a more extroverted fashion, walking us to the next painting. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below this video and uh, ring the bell so that you will get notified every time a new video comes out. For more in-depth analysis, conducting technique and conducting exercises, look on my website where you can find more than 100 videos and follow my Facebook group. And if you want to support this series, you're always welcome to do so on Patreon. All the links are in the description. Let me know in the comments what you think about this piece. And by the way, thank you, Nick, for suggesting this. If you have any suggestions for future videos, do let me know in the comments as well. And in the next episode of this series, we'll move on to the second part of this wonderful piece. In the meanwhile, please continue to enjoy music and be well. Ciao. Generally speaking, a pulsing point corresponds with the beat within the pattern. These points are connected by a stroke, straight or curved. Each stroke can also have other characteristics long